The people who sit in darkness have seen a great light, said prophet Isaiah. The moment has come to let the light in with Fireside Faith, a presentation from Calvary Tabernacle, 5035 Hedda Street in Lakewood, California. We open our doors at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. I am your host, Pastor Post, and with Miss Carolyn at my side, we turn to the Holy Bible to bring you a great message, a message of love and joy and hope and truth from the precious Word of the Living God. I called the message the Civil War of Faith. The Civil so War of Faith. We're not going to make America great again as long as we are engaged in the Civil War of Faith. There is a political movement in America that's going to bring America Bless down. The affairs of men, as he's chosen to do in America, every step by which they have advanced to the character of an independent nation seems to have been distinguished by some token of providential agency. In other words, he said, God did all this. We fought, but God gave us the victory. That's what he's saying. We fought, but God gave the American soldiers the victory. This nation was created by God. Thank you. That's what George Washington said. He said, we fought, but we would have lost if God hadn't been there. what Washington, our general and first president, said in the beginning. He said, what, regarding the school system in America, he said, Congress will look upon the children of the school. The exact quote is, Congress will look upon them as their own children. That's the school, children of the, our school system in America. He said, you do well to wish to learn our arts and ways of life. And above all, listen now to George Washington. You can't deny his own quotes. Above all, the religion of Jesus Christ. That's what George Washington said you should be taught in our public schools in America. The religion of Jesus Christ. These will make you a greater and happier people than you are. And Congress will do everything they can to assist you in this wise intention. Oh, my dear God, what has happened to America where we have gotten to the point where now we are teaching the Muslim faith in America. We have school boards and communities that are up in arms because they are now teaching Muslim faith in the schools. The Bible's out. God is out. Christianity's out. You mentioned Jesus Christ in school and they'll put a noose around your neck almost and hang you like they did horse thieves and cattle thieves and, and murderers in the early days of America. They'll hang you for saying Jesus in a public school today, practically. That's how far we've come. But we can teach the Muslim faith and don't have enough God-given sense to know that that's going to destroy every ounce of America. Sharia law will completely destroy everything that there is in America. There's nothing more contrary, perhaps, than the devil himself to the Constitution of America than to teach radical extremism, terrorism, so we can have terror in our own homes, in our own streets, produced by our schools and our colleges. We almost have it now. we got a bunch of, I don't know what to call them, young people who've never learned what it means to be told no. And they'll protest and break windows and burn cars and overthrow garbage pails and throw stones and rocks and, and everything else at the police simply because they don't want to hear a conservative speak on their college campus. Dear God, where are we? Dear God, where are we in America? Even though America taught the religion of Jesus Christ in the schools and the colleges, the colleges were all started to train the clergy. Harvard, 
Princeton. These, these were, were schools, universities that were started to train the clergymen of America. And now look where we are. In Berkeley, we're at such a state now that the, the liberal left can't stand to even hear the conservatives speak. They'll bust windows and, and burn things and pour out gasoline and throw bricks and everything else and shut the voice of the conservatives up. What happened to our amendments? Oh, no. The reason they do that is they can't stand and argue. They can't win the arguments. So instead, they eliminate the arguments. That's the process that's gone. That's the process by which evolution has survived. It can't win the arguments, so it shut the arguments up. I know what I'm talking about. I talked to one of the professors in our college a while ago, and he said, we don't even argue with the conservatives and the Christians anymore on the subject of creation and science because we always lose. So he said, we're told, don't even argue with them. Don't debate with them. No, shut them up. Shut them up. That's, eliminate the, the amendments and destroy f free speech and shut them up. That's where we are in America. God help us in this terrible war against religious freedom and war against free speech in America. Dear God, help us, help us in this civil war of faith. Well, I have some more things to bring to you. Uh, in June of 1779, at his headquarters on the Hudson River, General George Washington's private prayer was recorded. And here's what he said. He said, Now, Almighty Father, if it is thy holy will that we shall obtain a place and name among the nations. Remember, we hadn't obtained it yet when he pray prayed this. He said, If we'll find a place among the nations of the earth, grant that we may be enabled to show our gratitude for thy goodness. Oh, America wasn't started by a bunch of geniuses. It was started by men who had dedicated in faith to the religion of Jesus Christ and trusted him to give them national victory and a place among the nations. He said, grant that we may obtain, uh, be enabled to show our gratitude for thy goodness by our endeavors to fear and obey thee. Bless us with thy wisdom in our counsels and successes in battle and let all our victories be tempered with hu humanity. Now, my, my text says humanity, but I think that's a misprint. I think it meant humility. Let, uh, our victories be tempered with humility and endow us also our enemies to be enlightened so they will give us justice and freedom. These were the things that America was founded upon. The very words of George. How can you refute that? These are the words of George Washington. Some of them are in his own handwriting. And I have more to give you. I have more to give you. My friend, my friend, this is the day when we need to realize that what's happening in America is we're in a civil war of this faith. This quotation is from John Adams. In fact, there are so many quotations that I couldn't even possibly give you all of them. So I've just taken the tip of the iceberg. But back in June 21st, 1776, John Adams, you know, John Adams, here's America's founding fathers, first presidents, he said, statesmen, my dear sir, may plan. Here's what John Adams said. Spates, statesmen, my dear sir, may plan and speculate for liberty, but it is religion and morality alone which can establish the principles upon which freedom can securely stand. The only foundation, this is John Adams, the only foundation of a free constitution is pure virtue. And if this cannot be inspired into our people, in other words, John Adams, if he were here today, would say, if we can't win the civil war of faith on the side of faith, America will go down. That's what John Adams said long time ago. He pronounced the result of the civil war of faith if faith doesn't win. Now listen again. He said, the only foundation of a free constitution is pure virtue. And if that cannot be inspired into our people in a greater measure than they have now, they may change their rulers and the forms of government, but they will not obtain a lasting liberty. John Adams said, if you liberals win, America will lose and our liberties will be gone because they are founded on the principles of faith and the Bible and the Word of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. That's what America is founded on. And we take that foundation away. America will go down. Now, I'm telling you before it happens, my friends, I want you to keep this on hand. If you Take down a note and remember that, that, that fireside faith 
said, America will go down if the liberals win. Watch and see, because it's going to happen in the next few years if we don't win this war of faith. And I want to tell you what, it's not because a Republican won. It's not because a conservative won. Not because a populist won this election. It's because God put a man in place to give America its last altar call. And those of you who hate Mr. Trump hate God. And you are going to perish in the judgment of God along with fallen America. Probably we'll see nuclear bombs going off. I think there's one destined for New York. I don't want to scare the people of New York, especially the Christians, because I think we're going to be out of here. I don't believe we're going to be out of here before all trouble hits. No, sir. No, sir. We're going to see the Antichrist, but we're going to be out of here before the nuclear bomb hits New York. I believe we're going to be out of here before the 18th chapter of Revelation comes to pass. But whatever the case might be on prophetic interpretation, we're in a war, a civil war of faith. And if the liberals win, America loses. And Donald J. Trump, Hate him or love him, I want to tell you, he is America's last altar call in this great civil war of faith. And if we don't win on the side of faith, we lose America. I'm telling you in no uncertain terms. John Adams said way back in the beginning, if we may change rulers, we might change constitutions, we might change uh, the approach to government. But he said, if we don't base our government on our morality and virtue, not not throwing bricks and busting windows, but morality and virtue, which is not being taught in our schools. God help us. It's not being taught in our colleges. We've got communist liberals teaching, and our tax money is going to support these universities. We are paying to destroy ourselves. That's what we're doing in America. We're that dumb. We are paying to destroy ourselves. We're putting our tax money into supporting universities that are indoctrinating our young people to hate America and bust windows and hate conservatives and hate faith and hate God and destroy everything America was founded on. And my God, we've got to wake up. It's not that we are against other religions. We allow religious freedom. We don't force anybody to believe something, but we still have to win the civil war of faith, or we'll lose America. Now, I, I got to give you one uh, more thing to kind of top this out, and I, I'm going to, we're going to flip back to a little bit from the, from the live message of the church, but I got to give you one more handwritten statement prayer from Mr. George Washington, our general who fought to give us the victory and founded America on his principles and prayed and wrote his prayers out in this little booklet. I'll give it to you in a minute. And uh, you've got to hear Going this. Going back you've now, just even to just as long ago as 1963, the school district, the school district of Abington Township, Pennsylvania, prior to 1963, this was their uh, uh, public policy, public school policy, public school policy. Each school shall be opened by the reading without comment of a chapter from the Holy Bible. Participation in the opening exercises is voluntary. The student reading the verses from the Bible may select the passage and read from any version he chooses. There are no prefactory statements, no questions asked or solicited. No comments or explanations made, no interpretations given at or during the exercises. The students and parents are advised that the student may absent himself from the classroom or should he elect to remain, not participate in the exercises. In Pennsylvania, the Bible was read every morning. A chapter from the Holy Bible as late as 1963. My God! They'd call the firing squad if a student dared to stand up in our public schools today and read a chapter from the Bible to the whole school. Dear Jesus, help us. We're in a terrible civil war faith. Now, i got to give you this. This is the most outstanding, most unbelievable discovery that I made in all my research regarding the early days. I couldn't touch nearly. There are thousands of of statements by the founding fathers of America that show us that our faith was an absolute God-given faith in the religion of Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, the Christian evangelical faith. But here you've got it in his own handwriting in the prayer book that I think George Washington carried around with him on his horse when he led the army 
in a satchel somewhere, and he repeated these prayers over and over and over again. But listen to this one. This was a 24-page prayer book, part of his, his journal that he carried with him, 24 pages of written prayers, and here was one of them. I have sinned and done wickedly. Be merciful to me, O God, and pardon me for Jesus Christ's sake. Now remember, that's George Washington's written prayer, which he probably prayed dozens, maybe hundreds of times. Be merciful to me, O God, and pardon me for Jesus Christ's sake. Thou gavest thy son to die for me and hast given me assurance of salvation upon my repentance and sincerely endeavoring to conform my life to his holy precepts and example. Now, that's the sinner's prayer that evangelical Christians teach everybody they have to pray if they want to go to heaven. That's the prayer the liberals have to pray if they want to escape the fires of hell. Because you're not going to protest in hell, my friend. You're not going to protest when you stand before the judgment. The Bible says every mouth may be stopped and all the world become guilty before God because of the laws of God. I want to tell you, have you ever lied? Of course you have. Everybody has. If you say you haven't lied, you just did. Now, the Bible says that if you bear false witness, one of the Ten Commandments, you have broken the law of God. If you've broken the law of God, there's a penalty. What's the penalty? Death and eternal destruction. You've got to repent, my friend. You liberals have got to repent. You better stop throwing bricks and start eating the Bible, spiritually speaking. You better stop opposing Mr. Trump and start repenting to the Almighty God. What good is it for you to uh, uh, try to resist and destroy the presidency? You want to do that? Well, then what about if the presidency changes? See, and we get, a, we get a Democrat in, then are we going to destroy him too? Or are we going to destroy all of America? I say we're destroying America. There's a certain degree, and I believe Mr. Trump was sent by God. The Russians didn't put him there. God did, and he sent him to give America its last altar call in this great civil war faith. Now, I have to give you a little bit more from the live uh, message, but I want to tell you, friend, it's time to repent. The message of Jonah goes forth. God will destroy this place. God will destroy this place. Not in 40 days, maybe, like Jonah preached, but pretty surely. And we're facing awesome disasters. And you better be sure. We, you better be sure that God's anger is going to be raised against this country if we do not learn to repent. And we better win this civil war. Faith Christians better wake up. And we better get to fight. Republicans better wake up. You Republicans, you stop being pushovers and start standing up and fighting for the power of the truth and the gospel and Jesus Christ and the faith of Jesus Christ and, and true principles. Fight, 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 fight in the war of faith. We don't take swords or bricks or knives or guns. No, no, that's not what Jesus told us to do. But we stand up and fight with words and ideas, and our best weapon is the sword. The sword. We've got a sword, and we better take that old sword out, boy, and wield that sword and go after them and kill them. You say, what sword are you talking about? I'm talking about the sword called the Word of God. The Bible says it's the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. And listen, Republicans, listen, you conservatives. Don't be fighting just with ideas, but let's get back to what we started with, the Word of God, and let's fight with the sword of the Spirit. They can't stand up against that. Prayer and devotion and seeking God and repentance in our heart like George Washington did. He prayed this in his prayer. And I want to tell you, George Washington was a born-again evangelical Christian. According to that prayer, that's the prayer we ask the sinner to pray. And God says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Paul said that. And then the book of John says that if you, Jesus said, he said, if, if you uh, hear my word and believe on him that sent me, he said, you have everlasting life. You shall not come into condemnation, but you are passed from death into life. George Washington did that, and he did pass from death into life. I believe you will, fee- will see him in heaven. He was a born-again evangelical Christian, but that doesn't mean we should stop there. No, 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 no. Come on, you evangelicals, get off your, your stool and, and, and get up and stand up and stand for the truth of the Bible. Every born-again Christian should be spirit-filled with the Holy Ghost and talk with tongues. You ought to be Pentecostal. 
The power of the Holy Ghost is the power that enables us to fight against these things. And every evangelical Christian ought to be filled with the Holy Ghost and talk with tongues. You know that. Come on. Come on. You people who believe the Bible, read the book of Acts. It was Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost all the way through. We need the Holy Ghost. And every Christian needs the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost, to use the sword of the Spirit to win this great war of faith. My God, my God, it could go on and on and on. But I want to tell you, we've got to win this civil war of faith. We have some music for you. We have a little bit, a clip that we'll go back to the live message. But God help us to take the altar call that's given us and bow before Jesus Christ again and get saved. Come on, you liberals. Let's get saved. Let's get back to the principles that founded this nation. And let's get saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and know the power of Jesus Christ to save and help us. And let's save this nation. If we don't, you'll lose it for us. If you get in power, you'll lose it. I think one more Democrat in the White House, will finish us off. Unless the Democratic Party gets back to what they used to be when they were God-fearing people, not liberal leftists. They don't have sense enough to know that their ideas have never worked anywhere in the world, and there's no reason why we should prove that they won't work here in America either. Socialism has never worked. It never will work. It never has worked. And it won't work in America, and we ought not to try to prove that it won't work in America. We ought to take our lesson from the experience of other nations like Venezuela and learn it hasn't worked, it won't work, it never will work, and we get back to the faith that founded our nation and the prayer of repentance that George Washington, our first president, prayed, God help America. I don't say God bless America. I say God help America. America to win the civil war in America right now is God is giving America its last altar call. God, Mr. Trump, Donald Trump is God's last altar call to America. Now, Mr. Trump is not a perfect man. And I think if you... If you asked him, he would even admit that he's not actually, a lot of times, not even a good man. But the reason that he won, he didn't think he was going to win. His wife said, you're going to win. He said, oh, I don't think so. He looked at the polls. He said, I don't think we got a chance. But the reason that Mr. Trump won was not Mr. Trump's brilliance. It was not... Hillary Clinton's foolishness. It was God Almighty sticking his finger. They say the Russians interfered with the political. The Russians didn't do it. A higher power than Russia interfered with America's election. It was God Almighty who interfered with America's election. And you can't wiretap him. What he says, he'll say it wide open, put it in his book, and blast it from sky to sky. And you can do what you want with it, but it's the Word of God, and you can't change it. And I want to tell you that it was not the Russians that put Mr. Trump in his place as President of the United States. It was God Almighty who did it. And he did it to give America its last altar call. Now, here's another prayer. Same book, same handwriting, same collection of prayers. And I assume George Washington prayed this prayer several times. He had the time to write it out in his own handwriting. Here it is. George Washington. I have sinned and done very wickedly. Be merciful to me, O God, and pardon me for Jesus Christ's sake. Thou gavest thy son to die for me, and hast given me assurance of salvation upon my repentance, and sincerely endeavoring to conform my life to his holy precepts and example. Bless, O Lord, the whole race of mankind, and let the world be filled with the knowledge of thee and thy son, Jesus Christ. I beseech thee to defend me this night from all evil, And do more for me than I can think or ask for Jesus Christ's sake, in whose most holy name and words I continue to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now, do you know what that means? That means George Washington was a born-again evangelical Christian. Amen. 
we will meet, no doubt, our first president in heaven. He was a born again. That is the prayer of repentance that we tell sinners to pray. He prayed, he wrote it down. He probably prayed it many times. I repent of my sins, O God. I ask you to forgive me for Jesus Christ's sake and help me to conform to your way and your order. The Bible says, Who shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. George Washington was a born again evangelical Christian. George Washington was a born again. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus, I love him more. Jesus is sweeter than the day.